Alright guys, in this one we're going to talk about the transformer. Basically what that does is it creates spark. This motor will run. This is for a call for heat, this motor will run and send power to the motor. Send power to the transformer. And the transformer will send spark down to light the oil. How I check a transformer. Yeah, when you pick it up off there, you can hear it sparking. Well, I can tell just by that sound if it's any good. Another way of checking it is obviously open it up, get an insulated screwdriver. Be able to pull three quarters to inch and a half on that spot once it gets started. Now these electronic transformers will spark on their own. You won't even have to pull it. That's a 14,000 volt transformer. Myself, I like the old style 10,000 volt. Now that thing will shock you into next week, so you got to be careful. But you can hear it. Hear it? That transformer spent, sends spark down those electrodes right there. Sends spark down the electrodes. You know, arc right across. That's what you were seeing before. And as the fan blows that arc out to ignite the oil. Alright, basically we've got three different type of transformers. This particular transformer is an electronic type of transformer. This would be a 14,000 volt transformer. Okay? The car electronic type. This one here is a Beckett electronic type 14,000 volt transformer. And this is a standard 10,000 volt transformer. Okay? These are the kind I like to use. These usually last, um, they're steady, and they're an old workhorse, and you have a lot less problems with these than you do with these electronic ones. I found with these electronic transformers, Sometimes they'll work, sometimes they won't work. Um, I will not buy these electronic transformers and put these in anymore. I had too much problems with them. I, myself, I only use the regular transformers, the 10,000 volt. I have more luck with these. Now I got one over here that's, um, that's not working properly. So I'm going to plug it in and I'll show you what it's like. Usually these things, either they work or they don't. Sometimes they get a little wimpy. And I'm going to show you how to test it. All I got is a jumper here. Just hooked up um, 110 to this thing. I'm just going to plug it into my extension cord and I'll show you how to test this thing. If it's on the burner, you can test it by li lifting it up off and on and listening for it for, for the spark. Alright guys, so I got it hooked up to my 110 to the plug there. Just as testing purposes here. I got myself an insulated screwdriver. You don't want to hang on to the metal. Should be able to pull like three quarters to inch and a half. You can see it's be, be, barely sparking. See it? Transformer's dead. No spark. That should be able to pull three quarters to inch and a half. If it's only pulling three quarters, the thing's junk. Three quarters is the minimum. Okay? So that transformer, I took this off a of job. I know it's junk. So obviously this burner wouldn't start because it's not getting any spark and the thing will trip out on safety. Alright, guys, next things I want to talk about is the draw assembly here. Um, that's where the nozzle is. You got the draw assembly here. You got your jet tube coming off your pump. That will go into here. Okay. 
Basically, you loosen up this. This here, this flips open. I'm gonna take this nut off here. See the way the nut is? It's gotta go on a certain way for that jet tube to be able to go on there and tighten up. But it has to go on a certain way. Really put it over here or something so I don't lose it. And it comes out. And in here, you'd have your drawer assembly. Your electrodes, okay, and your nozzle. And on the end, you know, this particular one's got a retention head. <coughs> and now Beck has different type of ends that go on here, the draw assemblies. Some of them have the retention head on um, the end cone here. So, if that was a st style you had, you wouldn't have this retention head on the end. It would be on, um, you know, the draw assembly. There's a couple of different styles. But with this particular style, I got the retention head type. Okay, on this particular style, you can see there's a plate in here. Okay. Now, if you've got a bigger head, a bigger retention head, some of these plates are smaller. Some of the smaller units, like you'd find on a furnace, you'd have a bigger plate in here with a smaller head. That's going to restrict your flow down for less gallons per minute. Um, it depends on the unit you have, so they're all a little bit different. Now, on the um, electrodes, basically you want to have them. There's different settings, but basically you want to have it something like, you know, above the nozzle like that. Maybe a quarter of an inch. I kind of like to have a quarter to an eighth like that. And you want to have it basically just in front of the nozzle a little bit. And what they'll do is they'll send spark. Spark will be sent down here as the burner blows. It'll spark here and... The fan will, will send the, the spark out to ignite the oil. Okay. Now on the nozzles here, there's different angles and there's different gallons per minute. Now what you have on the angle, if it's um, an 80 degree nozzle, you're going to have more of an angle like this. Okay. A 45 or a 60 degree nozzle will have less of an angle. But that's made for a long chamber. Okay, an 80 degree nozzle would be something like that. A 60 degree nozzle would spray something like that. So obviously, um, depends on the burner you have. You got a short firebox most likely you're gonna go with an 80 degree nozzle more than a 60 now if you got a long boiler long firebox most likely you would go with a 60 degree nozzle which just has a different um, flow pattern to it uh, the gallons per minute Just some of my different nozzles that I carry in the truck for residential work. You know, 7580s are common. Um, 8580s are common. One gallon 80s. Now, B, these are Delavant nozzles. You got A, which would be a hollow nozzle. You got B, which is semi solid. And then you got solid nozzles. I usually run semi solid nozzles myself. So basically, if you look at a semi-solid nozzle, a solid would be a solid flow. Semi-solid would kind of have a little hole in the middle when, it, when it's burning. And the hollow would be like a hollow cone type of thing. I like to run um, semi-solids myself. And I got the different angles, 75, 60 degree. Now, a lot of the um, Collins run 60 degree nozzles. And I got some 45s over here. So this top number would be the gallons per minute, gallons per hour, I'm sorry. And then 
this bottom number is the angle of the spray. Okay. There you go, we fire it up. 